Hi, first graders. It is time for second steps. So let's get our brains ready for our lesson today. And we're going to play the game Shape Moves. But this time we have a new rule. So this time we have to ignore the shape drawn on the card and only pay attention to the color. The color tells you what move to make. So here's what the colors mean. So here we have purple and we're going to make a square, the square movement. So the square movement was to make a square uh, or was to stand up. So if you see purple, you stand up. We've got the red color, which is the triangle movement. We make the triangle above our head. So red means triangle. And last is orange. Now it, I see a square, but the orange is the circle movement. And if you remember, we did a circle above our head. So we have to pay attention to the color. I'll go over the colors again. Purple, stand up. Orange means circle. And red is triangle. So we've got our colors we're looking for. Now, as I show you, you will do the motion. Did you stand up? Let's try another one. Did you make the triangle? Orange. Did you make a circle? Now it's really tricky because the shapes are there and we see the shapes, but we are not following the shape movements. We want to follow the colors. Let's try one more time. Red means triangle. Orange, circle, purple, stand up. Good job. Now, what, school, what skills did you have to use to ignore the shape on the card and only pay attention to the color? Hmm. Did you have to remember what the rules were? Maybe you even said the color to yourself to help you remember. You really had to use all of your skills for learning in that game. Now, go ahead and let's listen to our problem solving song. I'm going to share my screen so that we can listen to it together. Oh, I clicked the wrong one. Let's go back to the last one so that we can watch the video too. All right, here is our problem solving song. We'll give it a second to load. Hopefully it'll work for us. Here it comes. If I'm stuck and in trouble and I don't know what to do, there are four problem solving steps that always help me through. Number one, it's the yes step. Yes, the problem. What is the problem? Number two. The T step. T, solutions. What can we do? Number three, it's the E step. E, explore consequences. What might happen? Number four, it's the P step. P, think of the solution. What will work the best?
what a great song to help to get our lesson started. Now, we know there are four steps to solve a problem. And today we're gonna look at a problem that you may have been a part of, or maybe it's something that's bothered you. Today, we will talk about how to handle the problem of name calling. So let's take a look at this picture of these two girls. Let's pull it up here. Who are struggling with a problem. Now, when we see we see these three girls. We have Nikki. And as she was walking down the hallway today, she tripped and fell, dropping her three things. Brianna and Tiffany laughed and pointed and called Nikki a name. How is Nikki feeling? When I look closely at her face, I think she looks a little angry, maybe sad, embarrassed, hurt even. Nikki is upset. She feels like calling Brianna a name back, but her... Now put your thumbs up if you think that would make things better. That's right, I don't see many thumbs up. Calling Brianna a name might make things worse. Does Nikki need to calm down? Yes, of course. Now, when we think about the calm down poster, we can review those steps. So the first thing to calm down is she could use belly breaths. She could name her feelings. She could use her stop signal to help her remember that it's time to calm down. After Nikki is calm, she can solve the problem. What is the first so problem solving step? Hmm. Did you say S, say the problem? That's right. What is the problem here? Mm -hmm. Nikki was called a name and that hurt her feelings. So now the next step is T, think of solutions. Think of two things Nikki could do. Did you say she could ask Brianna not to call her names? That's one idea. Did you say she could tell her teacher? Yeah, that's another idea. Could she ignore Brianna? Sure, that's definitely another option. Now let's think about what might happen. That's the consequences. We're going to explore different consequences for Nikki's choices. If Nikki tells the other girls in a soft voice not to call her names, then might what happen? Maybe they'll stop. Maybe they'll understand that it hurt her feelings. That's right, having a good conversation with the friends might allow the situation to get better. Here's another consequence that could happen. If Nikki tells the other girls in a strong, respectful, assertive voice not to call her names, then what do you think might happen? If she uses a strong voice, an assertive voice, and says, I don't like when you call me names, do you think they'll listen? I think so too. What if Nikki ignores the other girls? What do you think might happen then? Good ideas. Now Nikki decides to ignore Brianna and Tiffany. Ignoring means not paying attention to or walking away or doing something else. Nikki stands and picks up her things and walks down the hall. Ignoring the other girls worked. They didn't say anything else. Now let's pretend that ignoring didn't work and Brianna and Tiffany called Nikki another name. This time Nikki decides to be assertive. What could Nikki say in an assertive way? Do you think she could look at Brianna and Tiffany and say, I don't like being called me names. I want you to stop. She keeps her voice respectful, but she's using a firm voice. Brianna and Tiffany stop calling Nikki names. Sometimes it doesn't work to ignore someone or to tell someone to stop in an assertive way. And when that happens, it's important to go and ask a grown up for help. Now, who do you think are two grown ups that could help Nikki or help you at school? 
maybe your teacher or another first grade teacher? What if you're in art class or in gym? Can you go to those teachers too? Of course, there are always adults around who can help you when you're at school. But if this happens and you're not at school, are mom and dad a safe adult to ask? Of course, there are lots of adults around who can always help you when you are feeling angry or upset if someone is name calling. Now, we are going to practice being assertive. Now, when we use an assertive voice, we are firm and we talk in a respectful way, but we talk with a firm voice. So let's practice being assertive. Puppy is going to help. You will pretend puppy called you a name that hurt your feelings. Now we're pretending. Listen while I show you how to respond. Puppy, it's not okay to call people mean names. I want you to stop. Oh, do you think that helped? I think so too. Puppy didn't speak back. He just sat down and he realizes that I did not like it. Now, could you practice with someone at home using an assertive voice? Maybe this could work with a sibling, right? Sometimes we get frustrated with our siblings or they do something that we don't like. We can use an assertive voice with them too. But remember, we will always be respectful. Can anyone else think of something that I might say to help if puppy was upsetting me? Mm. What if puppy called me a mean name? Do you think I could use an assertive voice to ask him to stop? Let's try one more time. Something else I could say is puppy, that hurt my feelings when you said that to me. Please don't do that again. Did I tell him how it made me feel? Mm -hmm. Do you think he listened and understood why it made me feel sad? Yeah. So mean name calling can hurt other, other friends' feelings. Today you learned what you can do if you are called a mean name. You can ignore the person or speak assertively and tell the person to stop. You also learn that if the name calling doesn't stop, you should tell a grown up. Grown ups are always here to help, but it's important that you use your firm, assertive voice first. So make sure next time, if you have a problem, you stop and think, how did it make you feel? And what can you do to solve the problem? Can you ignore and walk away? Can you use a firm, assertive voice? Absolutely. If those two don't work, can you find a grown up to help you? Absolutely. So today, remember that when you have an issue with name calling, you have three things you can do. Ignore, use your assertive voice, or ask a grown up for help. Great job with your second steps today.